there, friends. Sharon Thomas here with Establish Footsteps Ministry. And we're just finishing out week number three of our July Meditate Study on Freedom. And as you know, we are just parked in Romans 8 for the whole month. And this week, we've actually been in two sections of Romans 8, verses 14 through 16, and then verses 35 through 39. Just meditating on the freedom that we have to be loved as God's child. And I tell you, there's just uh, such richness here to see with this. I know yesterday I you know, spent some time just praying through these verses and there was just such a sense of, of wealth in my heart as I spent time with the Lord, just talking to him about these verses. And, and I hope that you've experienced that wealth, that richness as you've meditated on it. You know, we, we know we're children of God, just like we know we're children in our family. And I know there are all kinds of high and level dynamics that go with that according to our own experiences. Some of us have come from great families. Some of us have really struggled in our families. And so, you know, you may not be able to completely relate to this, but I think for all of us who, who have a family, there's times where we're just more aware of the wealth of uh, what we have in our family. No family is perfect, but there are those moments where you're just so thankful that you have a family, even with all its flaws. And just like that, in the body of Christ, as we now live, in the, in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, I think there are times that we just need to have a moment and we realize and, and get that fresh perspective of how valuable it is to be free to be in the family of God and to be loved as his child. And that's been our focus this week. You know, it says right here in verse 15, that we have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but we have received a spirit of adoption. And that word received is, is really powerful. Uh, some of you may know this, some of you may not, but both of my own children are adopted. And so I have a very personal life experience with the journey of adoption. And I've also, because of that, gotten to know many people and interacted with a lot of stories of adoption over the years. But one of the things that was so profoundly made aware to me when we were walking through a hard season with one of our children, somebody said this to me and it just like hit me so hard. They said, you know, God has adopted us, but we have to decide if we want to be adopted, right? So God has, has given to us that spirit of adoption, but we then have to decide if we want to really be in the family of God. The, the offer is there. And for every parent who has adopted a child, th there's that love, there's that pouring out of, a, of, of just the spirit of adoption of you belong here, you are ours, you are a part of this family now. But there comes a, a time in that child's life when they have to reckon with that on their own and they have to decide, do I want to be in this family? Do I really want to identify and receive what has been given to me? Now, Paul speaks here as if we have made that decision, that we have received, that it's not just that adoption has been offered, but we have received because we are now in Christ. He's talking to believers who are in Christ, who are living in the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And so some things are assumed here. And so he says, you've not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption by which you cry out, Abba, Father. It's that very personal and intimate relationship with your father. And so there is a depth of love here. And that's why we coupled this with the verses at the end of the chapter that speak so, so uh, profoundly about the love of God and how nothing, nothing will ever be able to separate us from it. And really, as I was meditating, even just on the whole of Romans 8 uh, this week and have been all of month, I'm just uh, you know, just reminded again and again that this chapter really moves forward and backward. And we're even going to talk about some of that as we finish out today. But, you know, it, it begins with this knowing that there's no condemnation and, and, and that takes us to a place of just being in the love of God. 
and yet it's being in the love of God that can take us to the place of realizing we're not condemned. And so it just works all together, forward and backward, just covering us all around in the love of God, in the, the, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And it's just so, so, so good. That's why we're staying parked here all month long. But you know, I, I wanna share with you uh, about four years ago, I think, I hit a really low point in my life and God did some really good work in my heart during that time. But one of the things that he worked so much in my heart is just establishing in my heart, in my mind, in my soul, that I am his child and all that that means. And during that season, I really came to learn how just core level that is, how, how important that is. When we know that we are a child of God, it just breathes life into so many things. It allows that spirit of life in Christ Jesus, that law, to just permeate every part of our life. But when we don't know that, it really almost just puts a dam in a lot of places to where that can't flow out because we are struggling and we are living in a place of slavery. Praise God, we have received the spirit of adoption. And my prayer for you is that you have. But if you're struggling in your life as a believer, and, and that's not to say that I don't ever struggle anymore, but I'm telling you, it made such a difference for me to come into this place of, of being a child of God, not just having that, but knowing it, being convinced of it and living in it and being able to just on a daily basis cry out to my father, my father that I know. And if you have not experienced that yet, I would encourage you, even in this week while we're meditating on these verses, that you cry out to the Lord and you say, I want to know you more as my father. I believe there's something missing that I haven't really uh, gotten a hold of yet. My mind hasn't been set yet to understand and to be convinced. And I want to know that in greater levels. I know that as the days and, and years wear on, I'm going to come to know that in greater levels too. So in, in no way am I saying I have arrived. But what I want to share with you is that God did a work in me. Uh, regarding being a child of God that healed and set me free in so many areas. And, and that's, that's the truth of what we want to talk about today, is that when we know that freedom can just permeate into so much of our lives. It's so, so, so good. You know, one of the things that I had you do this week in your Ponder experience was to really compare what it's like for a slave versus what it's like for a child. A child in the house versus a slave in the house. And we looked at that from several different angles. And I want to share with you seven things that I really came away with from all of that meditation that we get to experience. We have the freedom to experience as we are children of God. First of all, I would say worth. When we know that we are a child of God, there is a freedom to know that you, that you have worth just intrinsically. That, that God himself, the creator of the universe, has given you worth. When you're a slave, when you're a slave, then you don't know that you're worth anything. It, your worth is based on what you do, not on who you are. But when we're a child of God, we're a child of God. We belong to him. And he created us and he has adopted us. He has chosen us. And there's worth that is just breathed all over our lives in that. And there's such a freedom. There's such a freedom. Each one of these things really leads us um, to experience the freedom from fear. And that's why even verse 15 talks about that. For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you've received a spirit of adoption by which you cry out, Abba, Father, you're free to just know that you have worth and value. Otherwise, there's always that fear of shame, of not measuring up, of, of not being enough for love. And yet we know that God has already dealt with that. We have worth. The second thing would be belonging. When you're a child of God, you live in the house. When you're a child in a, in a family that's healthy, you know that you belong. Now, there's always things where we feel like, oh, I'm a little different than my siblings or my family or, you know, I mean, I think we all go through that black sheep syndrome sometimes where we feel like, am I just like the odd man out here? 
I know I have in, in my own family. You know, but we all have those quirks and things like that. But, and even in the family of God, I mean, there's going to be places where we feel like, hey, I'm different than, you know, but there is that sense of belonging, like you belong here. You're supposed to be here. You're not isolated. See, when you're a, when you're a slave, you're always going to be timid. You're always going to be on the outskirts. You're, not, you're, you're going to know that you're there because you are there to serve a purpose, but if your purpose wasn't needed, that you wouldn't belong. But as a child, you just belong. You just are a part of the family. I mean, how many of us know that in, in every family, there's just quirky people, right? And, and yet, we invite them anyway. They're involved in the gatherings. They're all there because we're family. You just belong because you are family. And as a child of God, there is that sense of belonging. Without that, there's the fear. The fear that they're not going to want me. That I, I don't have a place here. That I'm going to be all by myself. But no, in the family of God, as a child of God, with him, with him, you can know that you belong. That permeates, that, that freedom, that love to be loved as a child of God just permeates into all of those questions and those fears of, of not belonging, of being rejected. We don't have to experience that. Now, we might feel that way sometimes when we're around other Christians, right? I, I know I certainly have many times. I've felt very alone in a, in a crowd of, of my brothers and sisters in Christ. And, and I imagine you have probably felt that at one time or another too. And I've had many people share that with me over the years. We're talking about the perfect love of God. The, the, the believers around us, and we're one of those believers, we're right in that family, right? We're one of the children. We don't love perfectly, but God does. And so knowing that we are his child in his love, we can always know that we belong, that we are never alone. That goes right back to one of our promises that we meditated on in uh, the month of June. So let's talk about another one though, security. You know, a slave doesn't have security. There's always that fear of, of, of being vulnerable, of being, uh, you know, not knowing what's coming next, of what's around the bend, of how you're gonna be treated today, all of that. But a child, there's security. A child in a healthy home has security. And there's no more healthy home than the home of God, your father's house. And your father loves you and there's security in that. You don't have to have that fear. What about provision? You know, a child always knows there's going to be provision. They don't worry about their next meal. Now, again, we, we, we can't attribute this to worldly circumstances because there are many children whose parents don't take care of them like they should. There are many children whose parents don't feed them or maybe, you know, there, there's a poverty situation going on and so a child might wonder where their next meal is. But in a healthy, holy family, the family of God, God being our Father, it is divine and perfect. And so we can't attribute this and, and lay it alongside maybe what our experience was that, yeah, I have a hard, you might say, I have a hard time understanding that. Yeah, I get that. That's where the Lord has to renew our minds, right? We, we can't always find these, these human parallels that are going to help us to completely, fully, wholly understand. And yet, when we allow the Lord to renew our minds, we can. And so in that healthy, holy family of God, there is provision, right? He owns everything. He, he's not going to, you know, not have enough to buy or forget about what we need. There's always provision. That seeps into so much fear. Now, for a slave, they're not going to know that. They're not going to know that. It's always going to probably be based on performance. And then there's a fear of, can I do it good enough? And so then if you're living like that with God, you're always like, well, I, I sinned today. I messed up today. God must not want to give me my dinner tonight, right? He must not want to give me the peace, the joy, the righteousness that I need today. But see, it's not like that with God. We have that provision always and that security. So we're not in that place of fear. This knowing that we're a child of God, loved unconditionally by Him, also takes us right into that, that unconditional love. So that on those days where we're just the naughty child, where we're the brat, where we really have been the problem child that day, God loves us unconditionally. And in a healthy family, a child knows that. A child knows, yes, there's discipline. 
Yes, there's things that may be consequences that come, but there's never that sense of rejection where you're not loved because you did this or because you're like that. There is always a sense of drawing you in when you're a child of God. There's freedom there. There's so much freedom to know these things, to know that we have worth, that we belong, that we're secure, that we have what we need, that provision, that unconditional love. Two more things here. Protection. A child in a healthy, holy, godly home is going to know that they're protected. And that's so in, in the world, in, when that does happen, and I pray that has been your experience, it may not have been, but in the family of God, we can know that for sure, that protection of God. That even in the places where in our natural self, we feel the most vulnerable as we remember and allow the spirit to bear witness in our heart, just like verse 14 says that we are children of God, there is that sense of protection. The mighty warrior God himself is our father. Yet a slave wouldn't know that. And so there would be all kinds of fear of the vulnerabilities that lurk in the corners, right? And in the future. And that even takes me to the last one. And that would be a future. And I say last one, I think there's many more, but there's only so much time, right? Uh, for me to do this video and I don't want to go on and on and on. And so you probably came up with some other things as well. And I did too, but these are the seven I wanted to share. So this last one, a future, you know, for a child that's in a, a healthy, holy home, you know, the, the parents make provision for their future. How are they going to learn? How are they going to grow? How are they going to become all that God created them to be? And as we are children of God, there's not a fear for our future. God has a good plan. Every, every godly, righteous parent has a good plan for their child. Even with our, our mistakes and you know, um, messes and, and things where we get that mixed up. We have a good plan for our child. How much more God, as we are in his family, he has a good plan for us. He has a plan for our future. So we don't have to be in fear of the future. We, and, and of the hopelessness that comes with that. That would be a place for a slave. We haven't received that spirit. We're not living in that law anymore. That law of sin and death where we had to be a slave to sin. And then all the death of sin came with it. No, we are living under the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And oh my goodness, how it sets us free to know worth, belonging, security, provision, unconditional love, protection, and a future, hope for the future as we live in the freedom of the love of God, knowing that we are his child. That's why, as we go over to verses 35 through 39, we can then say, I'm convinced, nothing is going to separate me from the love of God. And I would ask you, I have to ask myself, am I convinced? And in the times when I'm not, I have to come back to what it says here in Romans 8. I have to cry out to my Father and I have to set my mind on the Spirit so that I really can live in the Spirit of life of Christ Jesus and allow Him to raise up my mind and my thoughts and my heart to a place of knowing, of being convinced. Allow Him to bear witness in my heart that I am a child of God. You know, the pieces of Romans 8 are so intertwined. And maybe you're seeing that just like me. In fact, this week, the Lord put this, this thought in my heart. And I want to I read it to you because I wrote it down. And I want to get it just right as I, as I do. So it says, you can't experience freedom from condemnation unless you know you're a child of God. Or flip that over. You can't live freely as God's child unless you know you're not condemned. Do you see how these things are intertwined? Do you see how they go backward and forward like I was mentioning earlier at the beginning of the video? Let me read it for you again. You can't experience freedom from condemnation unless you know you're a child of God. See, if I don't know I'm a child of God, I'm always going to be going back to that, that serving, slaving mentality that's gonna lead me to fear. But then I flip that over. I can't live freely as God's child unless I know I'm not condemned. So I've got to allow the Lord to renew my mind and raise up this new spirit of life in me to live in that, to walk in that, to live free as a child of God. You know, maybe even as we've been talking uh, through all of this, 
you struggled because you come from a family where there is so much brokenness, there is so much strife, there is so much miscommunication, there is so much hurt and pain. I mean, maybe you have family members that you're not even communicating with today. And I get that. I see that. Um, I've, I've experienced pieces and parts of that. Uh, thankfully, for the most part, I come from an amazing family. And I married into a family that's pretty strong as well. But, you know, I'm just like anybody else. And I struggle with things and hurt and have, you know, um, grievances and all of that. And had to work and learn through things. But, you know, I, I've dealt with enough myself. And I've certainly had enough conversations over my 55 years to see the, the, the brokenness in the family today. And in fact, I believe the, the enemy came for the family one of the very first things. I mean, all you gotta do is go back to Genesis chapter four. I mean, it's only one chapter later after the first sin and one of the brothers killed the other. Cain killed Abel. You know, there was so much strife. There was so much jealousy and misunderstanding. And, 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 and it has only gotten more and more and more pronounced over the years. So maybe you're listening to this and you're just having a hard time identifying because you are in such a place of struggle with that still in your heart. I want to encourage you with this. You know, the family in and of itself was created the family was created by God, but in and of itself, as the family has, you know, just been perpetuated over and over and over throughout all the generations, being like it says here in verse, you know, 36, led like sheep to slaughter because death is all around us, the death of sin. It's just gotten more and more and pronounced, more and more pronounced as far as just broken. And and, and so that's the family that's living under the law of sin and death, condemned to just it always being that way. But let me remind you, even if that is your physical family, even if you experience pieces and parts of that, and you're struggling even today, as we talk about this with, with family and with understanding what it means to be a child of God, you are not condemned to live under that law of sin and death anymore. And so in the family of God, as God's child, you get to live under a new law, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. You are free to live that way and to experience all of these things, worth, belonging, security, provision, unconditional love, protection, and a future. So do not allow the enemy to pronounce any of that over you as that's the way it's always got to be. And ask him to redeem your family and watch him work. But you can know, even if your family is filled with strife and brokenness, you live in a new place. You live as a child of God in his love. You live in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And that has set you free to a whole new way of living. And you know what? God might even want to use you. In fact, I know he does to bring redemption into your family as you live that way. And they begin to look at you and say, what? What is it about you? that you have that security, that you're not afraid. See, all of the brokenness that comes in families comes from fear because we don't know that we're a child of God. But when we do, that's when the love can flow because it's the love of God flowing into us that then we share with others and we can love in more divine and holy ways. We won't ever get it perfect until we're in heaven. And oh, I long for that day. I long for that day. And I have the freedom to know that that day will come, that that's my future and you do too. But until that time, let's live the best we can in the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And part of that is living free, knowing we are a child of God. I hope you're encouraged by that. I'm so encouraged by it. it, it it's life changing to know that you're a child of God. It seeps, it permeates into so many places of fear, so many places of brokenness and sin. Oh, to know that we are a child of God and we can, we are free to live in his love as his children. So, wow, could keep going on and on and on with that for a while, but I think I'll stop here and uh, I'll just encourage you to keep going in this study of meditation on the freedoms that we have in Christ. We have one more week and I'm excited to share that with you next week. So I'll be in touch again soon. Have a wonderful day. See you.